Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited to do a little bit of a colorful makeup look today. I'm gonna to be creating the look I did on Olivia Rodrigo. I can't remember what event this was for now. It definitely was in LA. It's a little bit of glitter, a little bit of color, and I'm going out for dinner tonight, so I figured this would be fun for me to do, just to mix things up a little bit. Most of the products I'm gonna be using, I was looking back through my notebook of when I did her makeup and what I used. I've tried to get as many things that I still have in my kit. Some have since been discontinued, but I'll let you know from what I know, what is no longer available and give some suggestions what you could use instead down inside the description box. And also if you want to learn how to book celebrities, become a six figure freelancer and book global brands and double your bookings in any industry and any niche in your creative freelancer, the doors of freelancer freedom are now open so i'll pop the link down below um come join the best coaching program for creative freelancers i would love to see you inside without further ado let's get some makeup on so the first thing i used on olivia's skin was the giorgio armani neo nude i think i used the shade six or six mixed with eight maybe when I was looking at my notes, um, I'm gonna be using shade five on me and I'm just gonna buff this in. Now, most of the products I used, and again, you know me, I like to kind of go back and forth with like how I use products. So sometimes I start with a little bit of base, then I go back and do the eyes. For me, makeup is the most fun when there are no rules, when I'm letting myself kind of be in the creative mode of, oh, I'm gonna do a bit of this here. I like to lay a product as well, especially for red carpet looks. I am just gonna use this all over. I always come back to this, and it's funny because it's one of those products that even for more so kind of like photo shoots, I could use really well in my pro kit. I don't think I use this so much for red carpet, although it does mix well with the Armani Luminous Silk. Like if ever you wanna water down Luminous Silk a little bit, like this and that together is a really nice blend. So we have this all over the skin, just for a little bit of natural glow and just a little kind of light coverage. Okay, so that's the finish of the base. It feels nice and lightweight and there's a nice bit of glow. So I filled in her brows with a little bit of powder pencil. So when I work with celebrities, I usually like to kind of start with their brows first because it gives me a chance to really look at their eye shape, to look at their features and really think about how I want to plan out and execute a makeup look. So just starting with brows, I think I did a little bit of like a kind of crayon um, brow pencil. This one's by Chanel and just elongated the brow slightly and just thickened them up. Okay, so I'm just taking a bit of eye primer out of my Dior eyeshadow palette and I'm just gonna use this over the lids for a wash. I feel like the Dior Backstage palettes are so good in a pro MUA kit because you can use them in so many different ways. So I'm just gonna use this just to clean the eyelid and prep it for some powder shadow. And then I'm just gonna take my concealer brush and just make sure that is all kind of blended. Now, the gel I used for the glitter is what gave most of the colorful effect of the lid, but to recreate it, because this is one thing I didn't write down in my notebook, so I can't remember exactly what eyeshadow I used, but I know the glitter I used on top was the piece that really created the look. So as a base, I'm gonna take my uh, Makeup by Mario, this one is the Master Metals, and I'm going to use this shade here. It's kind of like a pinky, orangey coral. And I'm gonna take that on a flat brush and I'm just gonna work that over the lid. This makeup look definitely had a kind of like sort of curly, peachy, pinky tone. And it was a really fun look. When I did it, when I finished, I was like, ooh, that, that is a me look too. I would totally wear that. So it was really, really fun. So I'm just adding this all over the lid. And I would definitely say this look was kind of like what I call like a top heavy look when it comes to the eyes. There was nothing really underneath the lash line other than mascara, but this was the kind of the base product that I used all over. And it is such a pretty color. And then when there's hardly anything left on the brush, I'm just going in and really diffusing the line because I find with a shimmer shadow, what's nice is you often get a bit of kind of natural, it's almost like that duochrome effect where you get a bit of natural shadow without having to really do any shading work and just pulling it out on the outer corner. Such a pretty color though. Okay, the next thing I used on Olivia was the Surratt Autographic Liner in black. And I used this to start tracing a liner. I did quite a thick black liner. And because this one is very flexible to use, 
I actually like this is kind of my first line when I'm doing liner. So I'm starting with this all the way along the lash line. So you can see I'm going all the way along. I did quite a big Harry flick on her and then kind of filling in as I go. Such a good pen for doing liquid liner. And I always say what's special about the Surratt Autographique liner is that it's not like a felt tip pen where it's hard and as you move it along it removes liner. It actually is more like a paintbrush nib. So it literally works like a fountain pen where it kind of keeps adding depth as you draw more liner. So liner is on both sides. Now what I like to do for the next trick, especially when I was doing anything I wanted to last a long time on my clients was I'd actually go over with a matte black eyeshadow. So I'd go back to, for example, the Dior, this palette, and I'm going to take the matte black shade and just go over the liner I've done so it becomes really matte and a really solid intense black line. Place this over the top and you'll see straight away it starts to become much more intense. And what the powder is gonna do as well, it's really gonna lock it into place. Another thing I like about using a powder on top of liquid liner is you almost get a slight softness. So even this, Brush, by the way, is amazing. It's by Shiseido. It doesn't say what number it is, but it's such a good brush for doing liner because you can kind of turn it depending on the angle you want. But this is such a good brush for just extending liner. If you like doing your liner with a shadow, I really recommend this brush. So hopefully you can see the difference between one and the other when you add the powder. You just get more intensity, more depth, and it locks the liner underneath into place. So again, I think you can really see it now. It starts to pop when you add the, the matte powder eyeshadow. And I do think a black matte shadow is such a good staple in anyone's makeup bag for the fact that you can use it to just print across liner. There's lots of ways you can use it without it being stark. And this is a good example of how it actually softens liner, yet increasing the intensity. The intensity. And now I'm just taking my concealer brush and I'm just gonna run underneath to make sure nothing dropped down. But because we did the eye primer and everything's locked into place there, we should be good. Now I wanna do mascara and lashes with the first coat of mascara before I do the second coat. So I'm gonna curl my lashes. I think on Olivia, I actually just used her natural lashes. I don't think we even added any individuals because she had really good lashes. So I'm probably gonna do two coats of waterproof mascara. So I'm gonna do a very intense curl. Chanel volume waterproof mascara. I've forgotten how much I love this. I recently went shopping at Chanel and brought a ton of new makeup. So if you wanna see what I brought, definitely check out that video. And I'm just doing lots of coats of mascara. And I'm gonna take a little bit on the lower lash line as well. And then I'm just using a Q-tip just to make sure there's no fall down. Now for the glitter. So the glitter I used was actually one of the old Glossier Play glitters. They were like the glitter gels. I've got it in here in one of these Mio pods. Let me open it. It was called Firewalk. So if anyone who still has that shade, that is the exact shade I used on Olivia. I don't believe you can get this anymore. So this is what it looks like if I bring it close up. It's such, again, you get more of like the kind of coraliness curliness and I'm going to apply this with my finger. So now that I have the shadow on, I'm just gonna use my finger and pat this over the lid. And this is exactly what I did for Olivia's look. And I did it a little bit past the socket, but it's such a good like sparkly glitter gel. And I want Glossier to bring these back. They were so good. They were like the perfect amount of wet that dried down so that the gel was completely clear. Yeah, you can just see it's such a good color. If there's a pink or a peach underneath, it just lifts it so beautifully and adds a lot of dimension. And just keep layering. So you've got kind of the desired thickness or op opaqueness you want of the glitter. I think I'm gonna leave it there. I might even just get a brush and just go into the inner corner because obviously with your finger, it's quite hard to get into the inner corner of your eye. Actually, I'm gonna do this with the Q-tip. So there we go, I'm just gonna take the Q-tip and just bring that down a little bit into the inner corner just to get a few little bits of sparkles there. And again, I always think you can go over at the end with the Q-tip just to kind of move anything into place that you don't want or anything that you want to be moved 
more into the focus, like the focal point. So let's say you have an area with a gap of glitter, just go in with a Q-tip and just add it. So sad that, that Glossier stopped making this. It was such a good glitter gel. Um, other brands I love include Slave Fire Cosmetics. If you haven't tried them, I really recommend them. And I'm sure they will have a color very similar. So I will try and link one below. So I do want to do one more coat of mascara just to give kind of offset the glitter. One more coat of mascara. And obviously you could curl them again if you need to. I just want to do a nice kind of thick layer. And then I am also going to tight line. I feel like this look definitely needs a tight line if you have curled your lashes, just so that the black liner feels really perfected and finished. So then I'm just going in and tight lining into the waterline. This was with the Kat Von D cake liner. Um, this is the last one I have of these, and this is what I used on Olivia, but I don't believe you can get this exact formula anymore. So I would now recommend the Milk Longwear Liner, the Infinity one. And I'm just doing this into the upper waterline so that the lashes and the liner, like I said, look really perfected. So now we get to clean up. So for concealer, I did use my Dior uh, Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I'm gonna use shade 1.5 on me. I can't remember exactly which shade I used on her, but I'm not gonna use a lot of this. I feel like with this concealer, the trick is less, use less, um, and just use it where you need it. So I'm just gonna use it to lift in certain areas. And just around my nose, again, I love the way this concealer really bounces the light and it's very malleable. Like you can really decide how much coverage you are looking to get from it. Okay, so concealer always makes the biggest difference. At this point in a makeup look on a client, especially their celebrity, I would tend to use what was ever left on my brush with concealer just around the lip line just so I can kind of make it cleaner. Okay, so for cheek color, I'm going to go in with a mix. I'm gonna do a mix of Tower 28, the Best Coast and West Coast, mixed with Bondi Bay from Nude Sticks. These were the shades that I mixed together. Again, working with celebrities, I always tended to use kind of like a custom mix. So like making the shades I wanted, depending on what I'd used on the eyes, what I'd used on the lips. So I'm just gonna start taking this around the outer perimeters of the skin and just really blending that in. So again, we've got like the peachiness, we've got a little bit of like a deep rose in there and just blending it into the skin. And again, taking it into the hairline, taking it over the nose. That's the base layer of kind of color. Okay, so just taking a little bit of setting powder. This one is the Hourglass Veil uh, Translucent Setting Powder. And I used this over the cheeks because this makeup had to last a long time. And from what I remember, she was performing when she was wearing this makeup. So I knew she'd be dancing, you know, she'd be getting very warm and then maybe doing kind of like press afterward. The hourglass powder was a real kind of kit staple for me because it's very, very finely milled. Now we did use powder bronzer on Olivia. I can't remember which one I used, but I'm gonna go in with the giant Chanel one. This is in the shade, the medium one. And I'm just going to dust this first again around kind of like the perimeters of where I'd naturally hit the sun. Hit the sun? The sun would hit my face, you know what I mean? The sun would naturally hit the high points of the face. A little bit under the chin. So the things that were missing in my notebook were what I used other than the cream blushes. So I feel like I definitely would have used powder blushes as well with this look, which is why I'm gonna show you them. I'm gonna go back to my Chanel palette that I used in the last video because I think this peachy tone is literally very, very similar to what I would have used on Olivia for the look. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of that like on the high points. Cause again, it's very similar kind of colors to what we have on the eyes. A little bit up in the hairline. I always like blush to still feel like it's part of the bronze. So I'm gonna add a bit of highlight at the end, but I'm gonna go on to lip pencil. And the one I used on her was the Chanel uh, Neutral, Beige Neutral. So I'm gonna use that with my lips. And then I'm just filling it in. I always like to kind of fill in with a lip pencil. I'm going to use the brush that comes on the end of the lip pencil. This is my own one, by the way. So that kind of creates like a nice stain that's very much in the same color palette. There is a bit of a monochromatic feel to this. I think the glitter is what takes it out of being too matchy matchy. And the lip I did on Olivia was actually more of like a deep, a deep rose pink. And I think because she has, um, slightly deeper complexion to me that definitely suited her with this look for me 
I'm going to top with the Chanel lip gloss that I did use on her, but not actually take my lips more pinky. So the Chanel lip gloss I use, which I'm not sure if you can still get, this one is in the shade 744. Um, and again, it's this kind of like really nice pinky, peachy color. And I'm just gonna pop that on in the center. So like I said, I did go a little bit pinky, more pinky on her. And then I'm just gonna dab that in. So it's no surprise how much I love the Chanel Multi Sticks. Sculpting is definitely my favorite. This shade though really complements this look. So this one is the shade En Soleil. <laughs> Apologies. And it's like this, it's kind of like a, again, peachy vibe. And I'm just gonna do how I would do with sculpting just so that it doesn't look too powdery. I feel like the trick when you're using powders is to have something that just makes the powders pop a little bit. So the skin goes back to looking like skin. And again, I love this color because it has a kind of nice amount of like pink and coral in. So I'm just tapping that over, very, very small amount. And I'm just going with my concealer brush afterwards, just to make sure everything is like really nicely meshed together and then to finish i used a bit of the got to be styling uh brow gel on top of the eyebrows just to set everything in place and again give a little bit more uh separation and that is the look i did on olivia rodrigo i hope you enjoyed that it was very much a requested look let me know what other celebrity makeup looks i've done on clients you would like to see super excited that the doors of free of freedom are open um i will leave the links to all the details down below it won't be open for long though so you want to get in on this quick we have some special bonuses in store as well and i just can't wait to support more creative freelancers and destroy the starving artist narrative thank you so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed that video i would love if you subscribe and i'll see you soon for more